Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable. This week, the gents are in fine fettle as they discuss masturbators. Bob discovers a dealer fighting authoritarian rectal inspections via buttock clenching. Mark gets shocked by dire TikToks and a disgusting doctor who dies in an aeronautic hand job. Wade fixates on seeing Einers and avoiding Canadian super swine. From dead alien pilots to bad smiles. Yes, it's time for whimsical headlines. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Distractable. I'm this week's host, Wade, because why? I dominated last week, crushed the competition, aka Mark, and now I am here leading the way. If you've never been here before, there's a show where one of us hosts, the other two compete for points, whoever has the most points at the end gets to host the next episode, and the host can kind of do whatever they want, assign points how they want, whatever, whatever. And as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, my competitors, my underlings, Mark and Bob. Howdy, I was going to say, uh, as the host last week, I feel like I, I very well could have been your competition, and I graciously just allowed you to win, even though I could have just, just chosen to make myself the winner. So you're boasting a lot, but I really think everything you, you achieved is on my shoulders. Look, what happened happened. We're here now, and this is my Mount Everest, and you guys are my climbers. Climb me. That didn't come out. How are you? Good. We're doomed! Oh, great. Well, tell us why. We're doomed! Yeah, okay, okay, cool, cool, oh, yeah. Oh, everything we know and loved has been turned upside down! Oh, yeah, you okay? That's it. Oh, okay. No, it's not! Oh, I thought you had something to tell us, or there was some breaking news. Incredible news breaking uh, three weeks ago at this point, which may mean that the world has ended. I, it, like, considering that this is a message, much like Wade's uh, message uh, to Molly oh so many years ago, uh, we're sending this out from the past to the future, and we don't know what the future is, but when you're listening to this, you do know what the future is, because it's the present to us, it was the future, and now we're talking in the past. UFOs are real! That's not news. Everybody knows that. Come on. Go on, tell me more. Intelligence officials say U.S. has retrieved craft of non-human origin! I'm gonna put on my chapstick for this one. Go on, go on. I can't believe you didn't just put the cigar in your mouth. I would have bet $50,000 that was gonna be a cigar moment. You would have lost? You would have lost. So they recovered a, 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 a actual non-Earth UFO? That's what you're saying, they're saying? Well, what this is saying that they are saying is that this hasn't happened recently. This is a whistleblower who has been saying that apparently a high-level military intelligence official with direct experience working and heading UAP investigation for the Department of Defense has whistleblowed that he has direct knowledge, has reviewed mil official military documentation of recovery programs, some successful, of non-human-made craft. These claims are being backed up by additional intelligence officials corroborating his claims, both on and off the record. He has also testified to Congress under oath for 11 hours. Hmm. So just 11 hours of... Aliens, man! They're real! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this photo! You see this dot? What is it, man? Co Congress members just being like, uh, now on, uh, June 1st, uh, 2017, you sent an email to, and the subject of that email, do you recall? And the guy's just like, Aliens! <laughs> Are you listening to me? <laughs> They're here! They're already here! Then there's that one guy that was interviewing Zuckerberg who's sitting there like, Do you think Mark Zuckerberg can get my constituents better internet yet? Aliens! <laughs> now, are these aliens on TikTok? And do they have scans of my face from TikTok? Now, here's the interesting thing. He wasn't talking to Congress trying to convince him that there were aliens. He was talking to Congress testifying that there were not aliens okay so he was the person that was at the forefront of lying about the the presence of alien craft that were recovered he was trying to reassure congress that it was not true and now he is coming out and saying as a whistleblower that he was covering up 
a lie. I, I found this. This is in an article from Intelligencer. So I, I don't know if that's trustworthy. But this quote, he, apparently, this I, if it's the same person, I think it is. He says, well, naturally, when you recover something that's either uh, landed or crashed, uh, sometimes you encounter dead pilots. And believe it or not, as fantastical as that sounds, it's true. It's true. I think he's meaning to imply that they found the dead alien pilot of the UFO, but he literally could not have been less clear about what exactly he means in the quote. No, no. When you recover a craft that has landed or crashed, the person inside is often inside. It's true. It's true. I'm just saying. People have said that the United States government is definitively in possession of alien corpses. Yes. And let me tell you. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you. Period. Like, we yeah. already knew <laughs> this. We saw <laughs> President Pullman walk by them in Independence Day. Oh, uh, that's uh, true. Oh, you're right. You're right. I do see this. So I don't know what the hell is going on with this, but I'm scared. I am afraid. And I am horny. Because if there's aliens... Ah, uh, you better hope they're not sexy. That's all I gotta say about that. I mean, even if they're not, it's aliens, you know? Like, how... Shoot your shot, really. <laughs> I will... I do want to say, I googled this, and there's a bunch of stuff coming up, I think, related to your initial thing. But also, the very top thing on Google is like, you know, it looks like the results below are changing really quickly. This topic is new. Sometimes it takes time for reliable sources to publish accurate information. Come back later and see if this is still a true story. So Google's trying to cover it up. Google is in the pocket of the government yeah. and they're trying to hide the truth from us. Or maybe the other thing that Google said. Uh, you good? Uh, they're getting me. The horny aliens. Are you sitting backwards in your desk chair right yeah, now? Yeah, my back was hurting because this chair has no back support and so I'm now front supporting, but even this, it's very uncomfortable. I th that doesn't seem like a good solution. G can't you just like put a pillow down your lower back or something? I don't have a pillow. You have a boar spear? Yeah, can you put a boar spear down your back? That'll keep it straight. Stab that, stab that boar spear through the seat of your chair into the floor. No. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, prop yourself up. <laughs> Mark, you know how to swallow swords, right? I don't want that visual. That visual wasn't what I wanted on camera. <laughs> Look, it's just, that's what I visualize when the aliens abduct me, man. Gulk, gulk, if you know what I mean. Gulk, 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 we all know what that means. Look, I was a menace in Mass Effect. I'm going to be a menace in Ass Effect, if you know what I mean. Ha, ha, ha. Uh... God, I want a fucking alien. Come on. <laughs> 100% of men are lonely. We learned that recently. Yes. That's true. Yeah. That's the math. The math is the math. It's true. When you ask men if they're lonely, they'll say things, and I um, can tell you that. And also, I might be scammed in the near future. <laughs> Ooh. Did you buy something from the soldier store? I sure did. What'd you right, do? Look. What what happened? Okay, look. Uh you guys know all about NVMe U.2 drives? Obviously, sure. Obviously. So they're pretty Everybody expensive. Does. So data center SSD storage is, you know, it's in a, it's in a state where it's still not quite a f like affordable. So I was looking into like SATA SSDs because it's older technology, but I mean, it, like technically speaking, the actual flash storage inside of them is the same as it would be in an NVMe, but it's the controller itself that is what allows for faster access speeds. Um, so that's the important thing. The underlying technology is still the same, but for some reason, SATA SSDs are cheaper than NVMe SSDs, even though they're, they're basically the same. The controller is, is more complex, yes, but the materials are actually less because the enclosure, yada, yada. Anyway, so you can get like a SATA SSD at eight terabytes for about $450. It's been going down. It's still expensive compared to hard drive disks. It's way too yeah. expensive. But I just saw this listing on Amazon for NVMe U2 drives at eight, eight terabytes for 430, 430 bucks per Ooh. eight terabyte. And I'm like, that's pretty damn cheap. That's cheaper than the SATA SSD. So I bought some and then afterwards, there's no reviews. There's zero reviews. <laughs> zero, like, <laughs> it's just the box. Of course, because it just came out. 
I'm first <laughs> in line, right? You're gonna get a you're gonna get a box full of eight terabyte USB flash drives. <laughs> yeah. And so I might get scammed out of that, but we'll see. I'll see. Also, I looked at my search history because I was like, I was trying to find them, and all I see is ASL vagina. <laughs> that's not me looking up porn. That's American Sign Language for Vagina. If you didn't watch the end of the last episode, you don't know. This is totally fine. Mark's got a big crush on ASL. Really trying to see that veg. Don't say that. Don't call it that. That's not Gross. a good name for vaginas. That's an awful name. Way to go, Wade. Always bringing the podcast down. I Look guess. It's just, it's just so crude, you know? Yeah, stop being crude. So should we just say Inas and just eliminate it from the word vagina to just call them Inas? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Disrespect. <laughs> I just want to see those Inas. That sounds weird. Someone's in the kitchen with Ina. Someone's in the kitchen. Just give me my Ina. points and move on. Look, that's a, that's a lady's name. Stop. Don't take the Barefoot Contessa's name in vain, okay? The barefoot Contessa? Yes, there's a woman whose name is Ina Garden, who is a host of a TV show called The Barefoot Contessa, where she lives in her fabulous Hamptons mansion and buys things from her fabulous... Hamptons artisanal shops and then makes really elaborate fancy boozy stuff for her Hamptons friends and it's uh it's it's a it's a TV show so stop stop that she's a person all right you guys ever heard of the barefoot contessa no I mean I'm not saying that I'm a fan or I watch it but I'm aware of the show mainly because there's an entire TikTok account dedicated to making oh, fun of here it here we go with the TikTok have you guys seen AI Spongebob on TikTok? Breaking news! Like that one? No, no, there's, you know how they did the endless Seinfeld? Which was, which was like AI Seinfeld, just endless, kept going, kept going. Oh, there's an endless no. Spongebob, AI generated endless Spongebob thing going on that I, that I, I don't know if it's on TikTok originally. I'm seeing it on TikTok. It's like every other video is that is recommended to me. And so it's, it's just scenes where it'll be like SpongeBob and Patrick talking and they'll say like two lines and then it'll just be like a few moments later. And then it'll be just them in the same scene talking again. It's, Dude, it's AI, I, but uh, it's no, pretty funny. I had the funniest thing happen because there's a TikTok account that it's just the fish from SpongeBob, the news fish going, breaking news! <laughs> um, but it was talking about, um, who's the guy from that 70s show? Topher? Topher? No, Danny Masterson, the actor from <laughs> those two things I said are also actors from that show. Don't oh. don't dismiss me. <laughs> Ashton <laughs> Kutcher and Topher, what the hell is his name? No, 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 an actor from the show, Bob. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Mila Kunis? Are you talking about Mila Kunis? No, an actor from the show. Oh, no. okay. I'm talking about Danny Masterson, who was found guilty on two counts of rape. Oh, well, that's that's a lot less fun. That's a very serious thing to bring up. But I heard about this because the SpongeBob news fish on TikTok came up randomly. It was like, breaking news. That 70s show star Danny Masterson is found guilty on two counts. That's and that's how I found out about that news. And I'm like, what era am I living in? I deleted TikTok afterwards. That is a weird way to learn <laughs> that's not good yeah though no, that's not the right tone for and that's the second time i came across that account the first time was breaking news volcano in mexico threatens to erupt thousands evacuating and i'm like this is a joke right no that literally was happening that day okay well i thought that was a funny tiktok account but now i see it's uh it's a little... yeah you guys yeah you feel bad now you feel bad now no well i was just talking about ai spongebob episode come yeah, on you feel bad well breaking news is a funny voice and then it's not so funny what you said after yeah so. no that's right, a... give me points give me points come on uh three i wait i did stuff first i should get points before markets points two no, no, he made everyone feel bad. Ah, I did way more stuff than Mark. How do Give I only have two? He talked about whatever it was before that we were talking about vaginas. Nah, I don't think that was worth points. I already gave you points for that, Mark. You don't get more right now. One more. No. Do I get more points? Clean off your plate before you get more points. I don't... Here's one. What? Thanks. It was under my tongue the whole time. <laughs> you have to encourage him or else he won't eat his vegetables. So at least this is encouraging him. We're training him. Unbelievable. Um, well, that's great stuff, guys. Uh, some of it terrible, but all of it stuff. Parking stuff. back to where we started, um, what was the first article we were talking about? The UFOs. That kind of gets me to our topic for the day. And I prepared a soundboard 
introduction for my Holy episode today. So Wait, way. monkey! Anus. I did. What? I did. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. Yes. Now I didn't do any editing, so there's no music. So just imagine some good music for this. That dog can do what? Technology, man, it's just gone so far. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You can read the news on a computer? Wonderfully weird and wacky world of whimsical headlines. That's right. <laughs> I too can use my XLR. <laughs> Wait, Mark, that was such a journey of your facial expressions. Did you just die inside a little bit? What was that? I, I am both proud and dying at the same time. I'm just like, you did it. Oh, oh God. Oh, man. You remember before we went live, I was like, oh, I need one second. That was to record was my button. Wow, that's... Uh... Did you just press button after button in sequence? Is that what you did? I did. I did. <laughs> I can press one randomly here. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You can read the news on a computer. Oh, man. I... I've got four buttons for that. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I knew you guys wouldn't be ready for the kind of preparation I do. <laughs> we thought Mark had some kind of secret sauce lighting in a bottle. It turns out but any old monkey can do it, even a technologically illiterate man. Oh, wow. I, uh, I'm impressed. Thank you. Thank you. I knew you would be. If you couldn't gather by what was happening, I want to talk about wonderfully weird and wacky world of whimsical headlines. A uh, chat GPT generated that title for me. I love it. I said I need, a, I need alliteration for weird news story headlines, and that's what I got, so. Really? That's, that's really something. Wonderfully weird and wacky world of whimsical headlines. What does that mean, though? That's very funny, but what the hell is happening? What do we do? So we were doing an episode a while back, I forget when, and I came across this article, and the article was, Highly intelligent and possibly invincible super pigs are invading America. Ooh. That doesn't sound good. But I've got the story here, and I read that headline and I was like, well, I have to click that. And I was thinking like, dude, clickbait... I'm aware of it, but somehow it's still, like, on occasion, it definitely works on me. There are definitely things I see where it's like, I know you're playing me, but I'm a click. And this was one of those times. So I was like, what if we do an episode where we just find things that, like, are clickbait enough for us to just be, like, so curious? Either weird enough, wild enough, interesting enough, scary enough, just we, we see stuff and it's like, it jumps out to where it's like, it's gonna be mundane and stupid probably, but I have to know. What is this about? I want you guys to find that kind of thing and whatever jumps out at you. But before you do, I'll talk, I'll give you some time while I talk about, I guess, this article I'm looking at for the very first time by uh, Tim Newcomb. Or Newcomb. Thank you, Tim. A special breed of hybrid super pigs have started to come into the U.S. Uh, from Canada. They're a mix of a domestic pig and wild boar. They were crossbred to help farmers uh, deal with the cold temperatures up north. How are they so intelligent stuff? The, pig, the pigs are proven tough to eradicate, they can survive in a cold climate. Where's the intelligence? They're called super pigs. What's super other than they can deal with the cold? This is what I mean. I clicked on this and I'm generally kind of bored reading it. I don't see how intelligent they are, but it says they are. You done got clicked. I done got got. Well, apparently, despite the article not telling me how intelligent, they're highly intelligent and possibly invincible super pigs. Uh, I clicked it. I'll probably forget about it later, but I've been holding on to that article for like two weeks. <laughs> and it just turned out to be a bust. If only you had read it at, ahead of this episode. Uh, the point was the headline. The headline got me, and that's what I, where it got me. All right, well, I didn't know that we were going to be so topical before you even got the topic out, so can I get some bonus points? Because I feel like I feel like I did this. I already gave you some. You're up eight to four right now. I didn't even ask you for points. Can I get points for not asking for points? He just asked for points. He just asked for points. Give them and take them back. No, I, I didn't even ask. Now it's eight to six. Well, I already have. I already have uh, an excellent headline. I'll that... let you go first to see what you got. Okay, this headline is out of Spokane, Washington. Uh -huh. uh, the Spokesman Review headline reads: Police get search warrant for man's rectum. Police officers recently obtained search whoa, warrant for a man's rectum. Whoa, 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 whoa! 
this is just the title, man. He's got a pick. He's got a pick. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay. He's got a pick. This is like the core of who we are. Yeah. All right, wait. I got. I also got a title. Let's see which one you want to click on. Fertility doctor accused of using own sperm dies in crash of hand built plane. <laughs> <laughs> that one just keeps escalating. <laughs> I know, right? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Bob, you go first. Oh! <laughs> 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 well, don't worry, Mark. Mine is short and hilarious, not oh. as convoluted as yours. Oh. <laughs> the, uh, in Spokane, Washington, September 10th, a 31 year old man was arrested for a misdemeanor. A uh, warrant uh, that was out for his arrest uh, for a misdemeanor. So to serve a warrant, they typically knock on your door, right? And they're like, we have a warrant to search the premises. Well, this fellow happened to be in a traffic stop, so that's not what's happening here. But So they knocked on his rectum, and they were like, sir, we have a warrant. Well, so, okay, so also, I, I don't want to get too bogged out of this, but you're thinking of different things. A search warrant is when a police officer goes to a court and says, I have probable cause that we're investigating this crime, and I have probable cause to believe that at this address, at this location, yeah. we will find evidence of the crime. A warrant for arrest is not a search warrant. A warrant for your arrest is a statement that we have, uh, it's either probable cause or some other standard, to, to say we are accusing you of this crime, we are going to charge you with this crime, so we have a warrant that we have the yeah. legal right to arrest you in connection with some specific crime or event or something. I got you. So okay. this dude, this person just happened to have an arrest warrant out on his name. He was stopped in a traffic stop for like speeding or running a stop sign. Some some traffic stop. Um, in his backpack, uh, court documents say police found a knife, some marijuana, a digital scale, and a decent amount of cash, uh, indicating that maybe he was uh, dealing drugs, dealing, selling the marijuana, just reading it. But the suspect, when further searched, refused police orders to bend over, spread his butt cheeks, and cough. According to the warrant, he stood with his buttocks clenched tightly and refused to cooperate with any further instructions. A judge went on to sign a search warrant authorizing officers to search the man's body cavity, and he was transported to Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center so that they could conduct the search in a medical setting, I guess with doctors there in case. A jailer Thought he saw something, said Officer Brian Eckersley, spokesman for the Spokane Police Department. But for whatever reason, it did not come out. He's got a jail head poking at- Why does he have an accent? The jailer- <laughs> You know, Spokane, Washington, in England. He's got a jail head poking- yeah, no, that's how they talk there in Spokane. Hey, governor! Hey. That's the whole story. The cops thought he had something, and dude probably just really had to take a dump. And the cops were like, bend over and cough, and he was like, no, man, I'm gonna shit my pants! And they were like, do it anyway. They didn't even find poop in there. He must have gotten, got, he must have pooped in the car or something, I don't know. I love that for them. Great, great job. Dude, I thought it was a search warrant, like a judge had to sign off, like, we gotta get to this man's house and get into his rectum. I know he had to sign off, but... A judge did sign a search warrant, but the search warrant was subsequent to the arrest warrant, which was part of the initial reason he was stopped yeah. and searched. And I got gotcha. you. Uh, I see. But the search warrant was technically a search warrant for the inside of his anus area. Not too big of a search area, really. You'd really hope you'd come up with something if you go digging around in there, but whatever. Mm. That's the whole thing. That's the story. Yeah, that was fascinating, uh, Bob. Really good story. Great headline. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. That sounds so sincere. Disappointing is Wade's first uh, story in that it definitely wasn't disappointing. I'm trying to make that a negative comparison to that. It was super interesting, very cool, and fun. And you make good That's choices, kind of Wade, by definitely picking the more interesting one right off the bat. Mmm. <clears throat> Anyway, I don't know why I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. Fuck all of you. <laughs> a New York fertility doctor who was accused of using his own sperm to impregnate several patients died over the weekend when the hand-built airplane he was in fell apart mid-flight and crashed. Dr. Morris Wortman, 72, of Rochester... Morris Wartman. Look, I, I hate to make fun of names. Great name. Strong name. It's strong. Yes, yeah, a strong name. Um, was a passenger in the experimental aircraft that went down Sunday in a pasture in Orleans County. The pilot Earl Luce Jr. of Brockport also was killed. And I'm like, 
who hand builds an airplane? And I'm like, was this just some big conspiracy to lure this doctor into this plane so that he would die? Like, he walked up to a plane and saw it was, like, ramshackled together with two-by-fours and, like, bend-out nails, you know, like you'd see in cartoons. And it was like, yeah, it's flight safe. Yeah, it's sturdy. It'll take to the skies and then died a horrible death. Um, because apparently this guy was well known in Western New York. He was sued in 2021 by the daughter of one of his patients who became pregnant in the 1980s. The lawsuit said the doctor secretly used his own sperm while telling the patient the donor had been a local medical student. It said the doctor kept the secret even after the daughter, his biological offspring, became his gynecological patient. So all bad across the board, and then he dies mysteriously in a hand-built aircraft. Was it one of those things where, like, he thought he was walking onto a normal jet, and then, like, the door closes, but, like, the cardboard cutout falls, and it's just, like, this little <laughs> rinky-dink plane? He's like, man, it looked really different from the outside! Bob's method of making friends with like his cardboard <laughs> facades yes, and deep yes. layers and stuff like this. <laughs> I mean, ooh, there's a wiki how on how to build an airplane. Wait a minute. My, it's, my head instantly started hurting when I heard that. Oh no. Don't you have to have like a license and like clearance to fly and shit? Like, isn't that complicated? No, no. Choose what you want to plane <laughs> to be made from. You wooden fabric. They're light but weak. Cardboard, cardboard. Oh man, purchase a building kit online, assemble your plane's frame, they've got a welding torch here. Install the engine, connect sure, the propeller, sure. place the flight panel inside. Oh, just place the flight panel, <laughs> easy! <laughs> the flight panel. You know, the thing with your uh, altimeter, your airspeed, just set that in there and that'll work. Yeah, it says order a flight panel online or on an auction site. Expect to pay around $1,000. Some modern avionics come with a control module. You plug the panel components into the module for easier <laughs> installation. Unbelievable. Uh, heck, just get an iPad app. Who even cares? Just yeah. mount, a, mount an iPad up there. That'll have all your gauges on there. That hurts me that people don't care enough about their lives to fly in that. Part two, fly. Get your license in your free time, outside of your airplane building time. Bring your plane to an airport, find a place to store it, register, <laughs> complete your inspection, and have your first test flight. <laughs> Whenever I pull into the airport, I always see the uh, uh, cheap parking, long-term parking, brought my own plane parking. <laughs> Wait, this is hilarious. The step after have your first test flight is have an inspector verify your work. Well, well, that's clearly what they were going to do. <laughs> it's not even a plane until it flies. So what are you going to have them inspect your pile of garbage? I mean, apparently. Well, there you have it. You can build your own plane. That's super easy. That's way easier than I would have thought. That's only like a dozen steps. Yeah, that'll be like a day, maybe. A few trips to Home Depot and you're good. Yeah, I mean, day and a half if you want to take it easy. But should we do a distractible episode from our self-built plane? Yes. Yes. Mark. Mark, you have a whole wall of Ryobi tools. Can I we use your do. tools to build an airplane? You know what I haven't looked up is if there's been new Ryobi stuff put out there. How expensive is an airplane kit? Ryobi. <laughs> I, I bet you could make a plane out of some Ryobi products. I bet Ryobi is actively calling their lawyers to stop me from saying such things. But I bet it's possible. <laughs> Do you mean, like, use the tools in order to make a plane, or, like, make a plane out of... Oh, that's excited Mark face. What release, Mark? What Ryobi product <laughs> oh, is out there now? You want to get a Ryobi 24-quart hybrid power cooler? Oh, you yeah. No, actually, that's... Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. What, you thought I was just faking my expression? That's dope as hell. I thought you literally found a plane kit from them or something. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't doubt it. You, Yeah, you put two batteries in. It'll keep your food cold. It could be a portable freezer, too. It can get down to negative four Fahrenheit. Oh, oh so shit. This is awesome. That's life changing. I'm buying that. That's <laughs> great. Uh, you do that. Uh, great story. I will assign some amount of points to you both. Uh, Bob, do you have another headline? Oh. Sure, 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 sure. I do. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you want to hear it? Oh, whenever, you know I, what? Do, are you ready for me to hear it? I can press one of these buttons again if you want, like, uh, technology, man, it's just gone so far. See, I can't believe it. 
unbelievable. You know what? I like yours even better than Mark's because yours can be broken up and and used used throughout the episode. It's so versatile. Oh, I know. I mean, no, I like Mark's. Mark's. Wait, why do I care? You're not the host. <laughs> Feel sad, loser. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, the killer mentality. He really got it. All right. My headline is Eight Legged Mom has 50,000 babies. Two Legged Woman watches. Holy shit. I want to know that. Oh, okay. I guess I'll give you a point from Mark. I, no, I would like more than one point from Mark. I would like several of Mark's points. Mark? Well, no, no, not from his pool of points. So just the points he assigned it. So I got, I got, I got one here. A true crime fanatic in South Korea killed someone she met online, quote, out of curiosity to see what murder would be like for real, police say. <laughs> I, I actually saw that one. Ominous! All right, all right, all right. Well, Mark, I would love to give you the point there, but you were so excited about Bob's wanting to hear it. I gotta give it to Bob again. All right! You did this, Mark. My hands are tied. His hands are tied, Mark. What do you want from I'll him? I'll cut your hands off with my Ryobi angle grind. Okay, now they have to talk to you. You would need quite a large cutoff wheel to make that happen, Mark. You're going to get in touch with their lawyers. <laughs> I think you'd be much better served by a Ryobi reciprocating saw uh, with, a, with a good, strong blade on well, it. Well, maybe the Ryobi new HP plus seven inch circular saw might be just the ticket. Oh, or you, know what? you yeah. can get, did you know Ryobi has an entire table saw? so that you can have perfectly clean cuts on those wrists whenever and wherever you want them to be. So my headline is about <laughs> um, a person in Seattle. Man, I got a lot of Washington stories. Washington, is weird stuff happens in that area of the country. Uh, a person was diving not too far down off Harbor Avenue in downtown West Seattle. We all know where that is. Not far from shore, she discovers a giant Pacific octopus Having babies. My understanding is that octop octopuses. <laughs> it's not it. Octopi. No. <laughs> yeah, no, that's probably it. <laughs> uh huh. The it's that they they lay like eggs, right? So anyway, this diver comes upon a giant Pacific octopus in their underwater den, protected by rocks uh, and braids of eggs are blowing out, uh, billowing out of the octopus, and the the, the mom octopus is uh, <laughs> circulating water to keep them clean and aerated. And it's apparently a video, but I'm not going to show the video. Uh, but Aww. apparently uh, a, couple, a couple minutes after this diver comes upon the scene, the eggs just start hatching. The, the octopus is there just like blowing water, circulating water and whatever, and then they just start hatching. The, whoa, that took a turn. And this, this beautiful scene un unfolds. The diver is just watching and recording. Apparently, this was the final act of love of this mother octopus. Because after, at a, a few minutes later, after most of the eggs have hatched and all of the action is kind of over, the mother octopus just croaks and sort of sadly sinks away from all of her freshly birthed babies. After the diver stabbed it with a spear to take it home for dinner. Well, you don't want to waste tasty, delicious octopus. But, uh, yeah, anyway, a giant octopus had a bunch of babies and then died, and it's all on video. Wow. Beautiful. That is, uh, indicative of, like, octopi, or, uh, sorry, octopuses. Um, yep, they often you. do die immediately after, uh, taking care of their kids. It's such an arduous task, and, you know, it is, yeah. I was expecting, honestly, like a centipede or a millipede. I was not thinking octopus. Yeah, you know how centipedes have eight legs? Well, you said eight legs, I guess. For some reason, I was thinking many legs instead of eight legs. Centi is Greek for eight. Mm. Can I have some points? Yeah, sure. Oh, cool. Can I have some points? Uh, let's wait and hear what your story's all about, man. All Don't right, get fine. Here. Let me remind you what it was, because you probably forgot. It's been so long. Bob was just taking his sweet time with his stupid octopus story. With my fascinating and delightful and tragic story. It had everything, really. All the stuff you could ask for in a story, it was all there. By the way, if you guys like Ryobi, just know this episode's probably brought to you by Craftsman or somebody else. It's not them. But <laughs> it could be <laughs> Ryobi. I, I don't think any tool company is going to sponsor us. Why? We're three tools, am I right, bros? Yeah, well, exactly. 
Anyway, a 23-year-old true crime fanatic was arrested in South Korea in the in the South Korean city of Busan on Wednesday in connection with the killing and dismembering of a woman, according to law enforcement authorities. Police say they believe the killing was done out of curiosity, driven by the suspect's desire to experience what murder was like firsthand. South Korea's oldest newspaper, the Chosun Ilbo, reported. The newspaper said that Jung Yoo Jung confessed to the killing and was indicted for murder on Friday initially. Jung claimed that the kill, that to have killed the victim during an argument, but later retracted the statement when presented with contradictory evidence by investigators. A police spokesperson said they suspect the murder was premeditated and was driven by Jung's desire to kill someone for real after she, quote, became obsessed with murder from TV programs and books. An investigation of Jung's phone revealed three months worth of search history on how to hide a corpse, according to the newspaper. The investigation also revealed that Jung had watched true crime TV shows and borrowed crime books from the library, the Choson Ilbo reported. What if we did an episode on how to hide a body? If I win this one, the next one's gonna be how to hide a body. You Google search all the stuff on your computer and we'll be here. And you two will search for how to do this. Oh, I will not search. Okay. <laughs> next time I win, Bob, you just got some more points. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Two day, uh, please say, Jung, search for the victim online, eventually finding one through an app that connects parents with private tutors, per the newspaper. Two days before the killing, Jung contacted the victim, posing as the mother of a ninth grader to arrange a visit to the victim's home. And then Jung went home to the home disguised as a student wearing a school uniform she had purchased online. Once inside, police allege that she fatally stabbed the victim. Then dismembered the body, placing the corpse, some of the corpse in a suitcase that she dumped in a wooded area by a river and leaving other parts of the corpse in her home. Jung kept the victim's cell phone, ID card, and wallet in a bid to try to commit the perfect crime. Um, what? The taxi driver who took her to the wooded area alerted the police. Oh, I got, for someone who's uh, quote unquote obsessed with true crime, awful execution. Just, just terrible attempt at committing the perfect murder. Just really stumbled at the don't call a cab to take your body parts into the woods part of the lesson. Yeah, this is pretty dumb. Don't murder people. I think that's the moral. No, get no, mine, no, no, right? no. That's not the moral of the story here. That's not the moral of the story. Anyway, I'll take my points now. Don't even give him points. I already have another one, and I deserve more points, so listen to me. Look at me, look at me. Oh, don't worry, Bob. Look what I'm doing. Mark, for having the scariest story yet, I'm going to give you 10 points. Thank you. That doesn't sound like very many at all. How about more? It doesn't sound like many. I'll take 20. No, he's good. He's got enough. Yeah, I have a new one. This one's sad. It's a, it's a surprising headline, but it's it's sad. Real quick, though, Mark, 10 points is the most I've assigned for anything yet. At the time uh, of the signing, not. yeah. So we got to see what happens now. Yeah, I don't trust him, Mark. He's he's probably lying to you. Okay. Headline reads: People in Japan who got used to face coverings during COVID are attending smiling lessons. Oh, people forgot how to smile. I have some questions about this one, but uh, am I giving Mark a chance to to rebut, or do you want me to just jump into this? I don't know. Everybody, just give your best smile to the camera. Let's let's all smile. Let's see if we remember how. Beautiful. Two points to everybody. Anyway, my headline is a family thought they were adopting a six-year-old girl. Now they claim she's an adult con artist. That would be <laughs> confusing. I can see where the family's coming from. Mark, you're on a roll. You get this one, I think. Yes! Yes! Take that, Bob. No, you don't have to pity him. You don't have to lie to him, okay? Guess who's going to be looking up murders in the next episode? <laughs> Anyway, oh, this 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 article is a little self-aggrandizing because it starts off being it was perhaps one of the strangest stories ever in headlines. And I'm like, I know I won this one, but come on now. Natalie Grace Barnett, a little person with a rare bone growth disorder, was adopted from Ukraine by a family who thought she was six years old. Her adoptive parents later claimed that she was a, quote, sociopathic adult pretending to be a child. Michael and Christine Barnett of Indianapolis said Natalia wanted to harm them and their biological children. Meanwhile, authorities charged the parents with neglecting their disabled daughter. The convoluted tale is chronicled in the new docuseries, apparently there's a new one, called The Curious Case of Natalia Grace, which I have not seen that one. 
Uh, the filmmakers mm. tried to find out the truth behind the affair. Michael Barnett defended himself during extended interviews. Christine Barnett and Natalia chose not to give their sides of the story. Interesting. So there's going to be a lot of revelations coming from the one person they talk to. Yeah, exactly. It is just fascinating. It is just Michael Barnett, who is now divorced from Christine, mm. said the family was, li quote, living with a con artist and a psychopath. The Barnetts adopted Natalia in 2010 from an adoption agency. Barnett said in the film that they were given a day to decide whether to do so. They said she has dwarfism. You have 24 hours to sign. Otherwise, she is going straight to foster. We adopted Natalia because we wanted to help somebody who was in danger of never being loved, Barnett said, adding that her Ukrainian birth certificate said she was born September 4th, 2003. They adopted in 2010. He said they had no reason to believe she wasn't a six-year-old orphan. She had spondylopiphyseal dysplasia, the rare kind of dwarfism that can cause skeletal abnormalities and issues with vision and hearing. Natalia was barely three years old. But but it, but she wasn't a baby. She how old was she? I don't know. Wait, hang on. Let me. Otherwise, I'm. This is a long. Yeah, that's what is I'm the punchline like, here is that, that it is actually a child. This person is a child, and the guy was just like, "That's not a child. That's an adult woman." Is I that the punchline that this is leading to? I don't know, and I'm trying because a long article here. Uh, it said, interviewing the series, Natalia's eldest brother, Jacob Barnett, said he, quote, didn't feel safe around Natalia. I was just scared. Natalia spent time in the state mental hospital where Michael Barnett said a therapist diagnosed her as a sociopath who was making, she was released after making, she was released after making, quote, inappropriate sexual remarks to male patients. By then, the Barnett's <laughs> were convinced that their daughter was an adult. She's cured! Let her out of here. That was incredibly inappropriate. Is there not like a test they can do to find out if someone's a kid or an adult? Natalia appeared on Dr. Phil and maintained that she was six when she was adopted. Natalia's claims have never been proven. Now, at least in the eyes of a, the law, she's a 33-year-old woman. Whatever the case... Speaking in the documentary, Michael Barnett said he had compassion for Natalia, even though she testified against him in court. He said that they exchanged a discreet wave after the jury gave its verdict. I tried to look her in the eyes, Barnett said in the series, adding, quote, I mouthed to her, this is hard, I'm sorry. I have no idea! If they see her as 33 now, that would mean that they see her as being 10 years older than what they originally thought, so that is... They thought she was 6 in 2010? And now she's 33, yeah. 13 years later, instead of 19? Yeah, but I, I, have, I have no idea. Oh, my head. It's just like, wait, you don't know if you're really your age. You could be 10 years older. My God, that dog can do a what? button. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought I was... Oh my God. That dog can do what? This is the Da Vinci Code of Mysteries. Yep, that's, uh, that was an odd one, even for me. That's a tale. Um, let me give you some amount of points. Thank you. I deserve it. Bob, what you got? I, I feel like the title of mine was very much most of the article, but I have questions. People in Japan who got used to face masks during COVID are attending smiling lessons. All by Japan's public broadcaster NHK last month showed 55% of people are still wearing Masks just as often now as when the government guidance was in place during the pandemic. So, I mean, and this the article goes on to say, but this is also just a fact. Face coverings were already more widely used in Japan and other uh, countries in that region of the world. Like if you were sick or for seasonal, seasonal allergies or during flu season, it was already pretty common practice for people to wear some sort of face covering in order to avoid contracting illnesses in public. But apparently, <laughs> a 20-year-old is quoted as saying, I hadn't used my facial muscles very much during COVID. She has now hired the services of a smile instructor, saying that it's good exercise and will help her prepare to enter Japan's job market. I feel like the title is the whole story here, and very interesting that there is such a thing as a smile instructor. I love that. A one-on-one -on -one session... Uh, cost 44 pounds or 7,700 yen to get a one-on-one -on -one smiling training session. Uh, do people only smile 
because they want other people to see them smiling? I don't know. I mean, I smile all the time, but I'm weird. I will also say though, I can see this being a thing. Like if you have some kind of like facial paralysis or an injury or something where like you have to recover and like you damage the muscles, trying to relearn to use those muscles. But from wearing a mask kind of surprises me that that would just not smiling for a while, you wouldn't smile at all. They're not watching Distractable. I guess I'm just lucky or maybe I'm a, an ignorant fool or something, but like I smile. I smile when I'm alone, when I know no one will see it because sometimes I have a good day or it's funny or something. I don't know. Mark, do you smile or is that all just a show? No, I never smile. This is actually an AI filter on my thing. Whenever it detects something that you guys say that's funny, is I it, it automatically makes me laugh and smile. And that's why most of my responses are so jaded and antagonistic and hateful, because that's actually what I'm saying all the time. Um, but the AI actually just replaces half of what I say with actual nice things. Man, I gotta shut that thing down. What? <laughs> the quote? <laughs> Wait... Who said this? There's a quote in the middle of this article as well that just says, Culturally, a smile signifies that I'm not holding a gun, and I'm not a threat to you. I mean, uh, yeah. See, you can tell. Yeah, uh, Wade is not holding a gun, neither am I. <laughs> we are not a threat. I feel not threatened, but definitely unsafe. I just want to shake your hand. Uh... Pass. I'm good. I don't want to. I don't even want to pretend to shake hands through the edge of the, the screen or anything like that. I'm good. I'm good. You both of you need to agree on the bit here. Wow, that's awful. Wait, I, I don't <laughs> <Wait>. know. <laughs> you gotta reach off. Okay, you know if you reach across your body, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna reach out to Mark. But the problem is, I don't know where I'm placed at relative to you two. For you two, no, no, it was perfect. Thank you. Will can fix it. Yeah. Will, you got this. Fix it. Just green screen my arm and move it wherever it needs to go. Ow. <laughs> he slapped me with my own arm. I can't believe it. And then there's an explosion, Will. And now now Whoa. I'm running through a field, a meadow full of flowers and bees, Will. The bees. Whoa, Will, where am I now? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely not going to make the episode. Um. I don't know. I guess I guess I find the idea that you need smiling lessons. Maybe do a lot of people have like uh, like bad smiles? Is it hard to smile good? That's something you you shouldn't put out there being like everyone's like, "No, I got a good smile." I was like, "No, there are definitely some people out there with bad smiles, right?" <laughs> you <laughs> out there, you have a bad why why would I I I don't know. Maybe this is just not a thing that resonates with me. I would not need a smiling instructor. You just you just smile, you just you know, think of something uh, there are some people that ho no. that do like try to uh, change up their smile. You know, they want to have a more more. Um, <laughs> I I'm not. I don't mean to say like good smile, but it's like you know. Well, they're going for a certain look or something, right? I certainly understand. People dress a certain way. You do your hair. You do your makeup. Whatever. If you want your smile to look a specific way because you feel like that matches with how you want people to see you, I guess maybe I get that. But I I guess I, it's not a thing I would do. Maybe it's not sad. Maybe I'm just a judgy piece of shit. Wade, take all my points away. I'm bad. I'm a bad person, Wade. I'm being judgmental towards people who are just trying to better their lives. I don't deserve points. All right, took all your points away. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, you guys got more headlines? <laughs> um. Quick round. Fire round. We don't have to read the article. No, just no, fire no, round. No, we I, wrap I don't up. want it. No. I don't want it. I'm tired. I've got rapid fires. All right, fine. Man and youth arrested after baby donkey stole it from farm. That one's not that weird. Indiana man is dead after a grenade found in grandfather's belongings explodes. Three teenagers arrested after stealing prized swan and then killing and eating it. Utah woman who published a children's book about grief after the sudden death of her husband has been charged with his murder. Undertakers create quirky coffin designs to quote, break the taboo of death. Oh, I read that one before. Oh man, hold on a second. No, no, hold on. I got this. We're holding. Uh, no, that one's too sad. Oh no, they're all sad. <laughs> That's oh. wild, man. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. I don't know why. This actually does make me want to know more. The Ford Bronco is being recalled because people may get, quote, discouraged trying to use the seatbelts. <laughs> I actually have to go right. into this one because I'll be like, oh. that's that's pretty funny. 
Uh, teenager secures U.S. National Spelling Bee Contest win by spelling obscure 11 letter word Samophile. Police attempting to respond to a person crying for help find a very upset goat. I, I think we can, uh, we can missing keep... dog okay. found in an ambulance 50 miles away eight months later. Overdue book returned nearly 100 years late to California Library. The book's title, you ask? Quote, A History of the United States. Well, that's gonna be a little outdated by about a century. <laughs> Nun's non-decaying dead body attracts hundreds to U.S. City. Uh, <laughs> Omaha couple finds loaded pistol in playground porta potty. A PPP? The triple P? P <laughs> Cube? New Zealand's ratio of sheep to people falls to record low. All right. Uh, Quote, the best feeling. Woman in labor walks across graduation stage. Gets degree. All right, we're going to wrap this up. You guys did great. Killer whales I'm deliberately <laughs> hitting boats, causing some to sink. Well, Mark, you gotta get one more to even it out. Then we're Why Starbucks new olive oil coffee is allegedly making people poop a whole lot. That's it. We're done. <laughs> We've gone too far. That's it. No more poop. I'm going to assign some amount of points. Here we go. Okay. All right. Um, good work, everybody. Good work. Thank you for participating in wonderfully weird and wacky world of whimsical headlines. Appreciate that very much. Thank you, thank you. Or weird part four. Weird no, four. It, no, it is not. Weird four. No, weird four. No, weird four. Weird no, four. it is not. Weird four. This is not weird four. Four. This is not weird. weird. Thank you for participating in the bit, making fun of that episode idea, I guess. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You can read the news on a computer? See, it's about headlines! Old me said so. I can't be weird what I'm weirding. You can read weird? That's what it said. Don't play it again. Okay. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me. All Don't right. Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't look at me. Ultimately, you guys came in with some great headlines. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Hotel guest wake up, wakes up to manager sucking his toes. <laughs> you ordered the deluxe package, sir. Injured Swiss cow rescued, re, whoop, rescued via helicopter. I am going to tell you who won now. Uh, okay. I'm going to regret everything else you all say. Uh, it was a close one. It's a one point difference. Wow, Despite Bob telling me to get rid of all of his points, which I did. The final score, Mark, with 29. Bob, you had zero. But you ended with 30. And do you know why this was? Because Mark said if he won, we would have to Google search how to hide a body. And so I made a rule for every one point I give to Mark, Bob has to at least be one point over that. Mark, you couldn't win. Congratulations. Oh. Wow, I feel like that happens to Mark almost exclusively. Well, he shouldn't have threatened to make us Google how to hide corpses because I don't want that on my search history. Mark, in honor of you, I will do whatever topic you want for the next episode. And you don't have to take me up on that, but if you have an idea, I will absolutely do it. No, 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 I'm good. Okay. Well, then I'll do my topic then. And okay, you can good. do the murder good. thing later. I don't want to, I'm going to be sick on murder thing. We're going to have uh, Wade at home. I'm going to get Wade from Wish.com to substitute. I got to sneeze. All right, Wade, we'll, we'll create a, uh, like a... <laughs> oh, God! Why did you lead so far away to see? We still you heard, heard it. him. You heard him. It, imagine if he was in the microphone in that moment. Just yeah, cover imagine. your... We'd be All dead. Right. So, uh, congrats. Uh, who did I say what? Bob, congrats. It was really good. Oh, no, actually, you said I won. You, uh, wait, sorry, you said oh, I won. Oh, no, you did say that, actually. Oh, did I? All right, well, as the host, I changed my mind. Who wins? Nobody, but I guess you. What if nobody wins? Can we do that? Is that allowed? Uh, I did have, because of the headlines, Bob had read more of the headlines first for me picking his. He was winning before he said to take away all of his points. So mm -hmm. oh, so I won twice, basically. Yeah, you won twice. Mark, you really didn't stand a chance today. You really dropped the ball. Loser speech. Competitors in Zorb Balls race go through gator-infested waters at Gatorland. You know, I'll give you, I'll give you half a point for that. That was really uh, good. Uh, Police say this is the quote, very last warning for an 82 year old German convicted once again of dealing drugs. 
This is your last warning. <laughs> this is the last time we cannot do this anymore. <laughs> Hans, please. How many times must we tell you? Is that your guys' losers and winners speeches? Is that it? Yep, that's it. Great. Well, thank you all for watching, I think. To, this is not weird for this is wonderfully weird and wacky world of whimsical headlines otherwise just called interesting headline i don't know what the hell it's called well it'll have a title and it'll be so good you guys be oh man i can't wait to watch will come up with a wonderfully weird and wacky world of whimsical headline for this <laughs> or we will in a minute anyway if you haven't already go follow my co-host mark at markiplier bob at my skirm i'm wade minion seven 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 or lord minion seven 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 we might maybe have merch, probably not, but there's a chance. Uh oh, Make sure to follow the podcast and watch on Spotify where you can see our wonderfully weird and wacky faces and smiles and other shit that we do. And I guess stay tuned for the next one where Bob will host and we'll find out what wonderfully weird and wacky shit we'll get into. Thank you all for joining. Until next time, podcast out. A brain implant changed her life. Then it was removed against her will. Um. Rolling Thunder. Contestants chase cheese wheel down a hill in chaotic UK race. Don't fish with a gun in Kansas, game warden says. Indian official suspended after draining 200,000 gallons of water from a reservoir to retrieve the phone he dropped while taking a selfie. Seagulls, quote, high on spice, end quote, after making off with stashes of drugs. Man steals backhoe for 10 mile drive to Illinois airport to catch flight. Auschwitz Museum criticized tasteless ice cream stand near iconic Death Gate. Now, I don't know if they're just saying the ice cream was bland or if <laughs> it's just in bad taste. <laughs> ah, bad taste. Chirping sounds lead airport officials to bag filled with smuggled parrot eggs. Man turned into King Kong and threatened partner with knife after being served cauliflower cheese on his birthday. <laughs> we don't like. When you adopt a desert tortoise, prepare for a surprisingly social and zippy pet. You know the episode's over, right, guys? Eh?